Volpone is considered to be Ben Jonson's masterpiece. A dark, satirical look at human weakness and greed, it blends realism with caricatures drawn straight from Aesopian fables. The fox, playing dead to lure unsuspecting birds that would come too near. Jonson regularly drew from classical theatre thanks to his education, but with Volpone he also drew from a more accessible and popular form of theatre, the Commedia dell'arte. Commedia dell'arte is improvisational Italian theatre that travelled around Europe from the 16th to 17th centuries. It was performed outdoors in temporary venues, with actors portraying stock characters in loosely written scenarios. Whilst Johnson's characters in Volpone are not ripped straight from Commedia's stock characters, there are undeniable similarities and some probable inspiration drawn from Commedia's style of situational gags known as Lassi. Commedia has three stock character groups, the masters and the servants, who wear masks, and the lovers, who are unmasked. One of the masters is Pantalone. He is usually an old merchant whose primary trait is greed. Think Mr Burns from The Simpsons. He is stringent with money, uncharitable, and values riches above all else. A few of the characters in Volpone align with Pantalone. Volpone himself exhibits these characteristics, as well as Corvino, but most of all Pantalone is encapsulated in Corbaccio. Strung on him still. Oh, most violent, sir. His speech is broken and his eyes are set. His face drawn longer than was wont. How? Oh, How? Oh, stronger than he was wont? No, his face drawn longer than was wont. Oh, good. His mouth is ever gaping and his eyelids hang. Good. A frozen numbness stiffens all his joints Jeez. and makes the colour of his flesh light Good. <laughs> His age is one of his defining traits, and his greed is so much that he disinherits his son in an effort to become Volpone's heir. Going back to Corvino, he actually refers to himself as Pantalone in the Montebank scene, when confronting a disguised Volpone about making move on his wife Celia. Tomorrow I shall be newly christened the Pantalone de Bessonosi about the town! Away! Away! <laughs> Another common trait of Pantalone is that he's a cuckold. And it's ironic here that Corvino would make this comparison now in reaction to someone kissing his wife's handkerchief, and not later when he literally pimps his wife out to Volpone, again, all for a chance at Volpone's inheritance. The second of the masters seen in Volpone is the Doctor, a character who values knowledge but actually has very little. Again, for a modern parallel, Professor Farnsworth is a spot-on example. What's this? I've won the Spanish National Lottery! No, it's a scam! Yes, yes, a, a scam. Uh, my goodness, I'm rich! And to think I didn't even know I had a ticket! In Volpone, Voltore fits the Doctor well. Incredibly proud, but also incredibly inept and foolish. But am I sole heir? Confirmed this morning without a partner. The wax is warm yet, the ink scarce dry upon the parchment. Happy, happy me! The servants, or the Zani, are the source of most of the practical humour in Commedia. The Zani in particular that we see in Volpone is Brigella, in the character of Mosca. Brigella is an intelligent servant, but selfish and scheming. Edmund Blackadder is a good modern example. Honestly, you'd think someone was coming in here, stealing the damn things, and then selling them off. <laughs> Impossible, sir. Only you and I have access to your socks. In the first act of Volpone, it is Mosca that manipulates Voltore, Corbaccio and Corvino, and it is Mosca that brings up Celia to Volpone, which would eventually lead to his downfall. Loyalty is also not something Brigella values, and Mosca betrays Volpone in effort not only to save himself, but also to secure Volpone's fortune. For the lovers, or the Inamorati, we see some similarities in the characters of Celia and Benario. The Inamorati are young, sincere, and usually the children of the masters, though here Celia is the wife of Corvino instead of child. Even though Celia and Benario are not lovers to each other, they are the only characters in the play that remain uncorrupted and actually have a favourable ending. The Inamorati are also very over the top with their emotions, which in Volpone actually makes them less relatable. For example, Celia's obsession with purity is played as excessive and off-putting, almost making it an undesirable characteristic. 
Be not thus obstinate, I have not deserved it. Think who it is entreats you. Do but go kiss him, touch him. But for my sake, at my suit, this once, no, not, fine. The presence of these distinct traits begs the question of why Johnson would choose to be inspired by the Commedia dell'arte for his characters. Well, something we see a lot in comedy is the use of familiar characters, with their defining features over-exaggerated. It allows the audience to identify with them quickly. It builds immediate rapport between the characters and the audience without a need for a lengthy backstory. One look at their mask or costume and the audience knows immediately what they're about. Even if the audience was not familiar with these specific comedia stock characters, they were designed to be familiar despite language and cultural barriers. For comedia, this allowed the actors to adapt their performances to their audience. For Johnson, this allowed him to play with the audience's expectations to make the drama and the moral more impactful. Volpone is a morally bad man, yet Johnson uses his familiarity and his charm to manipulate the audience to root for him. We want to see him succeed, even more so when we see the foolishness of those who are tricked by him. In a comedy, we would expect Volpone to come out unscathed or even rewarded for his cunning, and yet he is punished along with the other corrupted characters. As mentioned before though, the stock characters are not the only feature of Commedia that Johnson uses in Volpone. He also uses Lassi, which are stock physical gags and routines that can drive the plot or provide distraction from it. Lassi could range from a simple cue, such as a song or a performance. She called me Mr. Bombastic, tell me fantastic, touch me on me box, she says I'm Mr. Roll. Or a general situation, such as making a complaint. What's wrong with it? I tell you what's wrong with it, my lad. It's dead. That's what's wrong with it. No, no, it's, it's resting, look. The Lazzi provides the prompt for the comedy. In Volpone, the characters of Nano, Castrone, and Androgino regularly create distractions with songs and performances within the play that subtly introduce themes we see later on and foreshadow events. Commedia dell'arte was theatre for the masses. It was designed to reach as many people as possible, regardless of class, education, language or culture. So it makes sense that Johnson would use this as the vehicle for his moral, which is ultimately a warning against greed and avarice. Michael Jameson surmises that the master theme in Johnson's satirical comedies is human folly, particularly that obsessive human greed. The comedy is harsh, single-minded and inhospitable to sentiment, pathos and irrelevance. Satire is, by definition, exaggeration for the purposes of critique, and Commedia provides that exaggeration. When you put all of these characters together, big and bold with their desires, their needs, their energies, their shapes, their ways of walking, it's like a firework display. It's an exaggerated mirror of society.